In this episode, I paint the inside of a shipping container. I'm not bluffing. Well, I'm in Makara again, as you can see. And in fact, we're a little bit more full up than we were last time. Um, heading over back to Dauntless, which is uh, basically in between Benfleet and Canvey. Uh, and it's a really good way to access both, of course, the River Thames, but also the North Sea. It's where Alan set off from all those months ago now. And I'm going to be basing myself there for a lot of my manufacturing work for making bits for Alan, but also for the Arctic and so on. And so I'm going to treat you today to um, uh, a bit of the prep work that I'm doing there as I've just been given a, an area where I can store and, uh, and work with, with all of my gear, which is exciting. So I'll show you one with that. It's good to be back in the yard where my very first work began on Alan more than three years ago and where my team and I have been welcomed, put up with, humoured and supported. I will get changed at the moment into more appropriate clothing, but the good news is we have my new container. I'd been at a work event, so clearly no one will recognise me until I'm back in uniform. I've been awaiting a container becoming available for a while, and for clarity this is not an alternative to my underground, environmentally stable unit back in London. This will be for industrious work, and doing my projects that involve chemicals, sparks and loud noise. I picked the one that to me was in best condition, and of course watertight, so really it's just cosmetics and layout to sort out. Pretty good. Dry. Doesn't need much trap of paint. Echoey. Despite the entire rest of the country seemingly being in the grip of a storm, somehow we in the southeast had this instead, so I took advantage. Metal paint that doesn't require a primer is increasingly expensive, but I managed to get a couple of tins of quality metal gloss paint for around a five or a litre. I know it's a used container, but there's no reason why we shouldn't respect the floor, so I'm going to put down some sheeting. I'll probably treat and coat the wooden floor, but the thought of letting that floor get splattered with paint would be undignified, and something Alan would not approve of should he have seen. It's a solvent-based paint, so lots of ventilation needed, and I thought I'd go over first with a large roller at high speed to cover all the areas I could, and then leave the corners and awkward angles until later. The steel was a combination of matte paint in good condition, and a few light speckles of rust. I'm going for white all over, so the internal ends up as light and bright as possible, best for getting work done, and hopefully able to be wiped clean. It might yellow or dull as time goes on, but we can live with that, as I find that even the pricey non-yellowing white paints rarely live up to the hype. So although I do need to get some smaller rollers and find my large cheap brushes, that's most of it done. The paint is opaque enough for the single coat to be more or less good enough. It's certainly not worth the time or cost to do two full coats. The door may need some extra work and I want to lubricate the hinges and closures, especially since the sea air can be salty even this distance from the water. Things got darker, literally not figuratively, so I did the big shift of boxes, metal stock, equipment and so on over from the temporary storage the yard staff had kindly offered me since I emptied Alan back in June. This is just for now, until I build the racking and so on. It's hard to realise quite how much stuff accrued at the yard over all that time I worked on Alan and other builds. Well, that was all very tiring, but I think I've completed most of the paintwork. It's just all the little nooks and crannies I need to get a, a brush into now. And then the next step is going to be to have all this stuff which is part organised out again. I can put in all the shelving and then my big work surface in this area here which will then take advantage of natural light when I can use it. And apparently at some point we're going to have power so this is going to become quite a useful little place for me. This is my plan. So at the far end and along one of the sides I'm going to put in some shelving which will go all the way up to the quite tall roof. And then of course nearer the entrance where there's going to be lots of natural light I can put in the worktop. Along the other side will be those large storage boxes and they can again stack all the way up to the ceiling. At some points I'll be wanting to do some composites and laminating work that requires more surface area, so I'll leave space for the worktop to be extended almost to double the size out here towards the entrance. I'll head up to Allen early next week for some substantial work, assuming Scotland hasn't been sunk like Atlantis in the meantime, and we'll get going seriously on the big jobs. Plus, fun news. The first of the electric motors is due to arrive soon, and it'll have three rolls. The first will be powering Allenson III. Can you guess the other two? Finally, it's getting closer to my live event in London, so those of you in the area next month, check the link in description. Also, check out memberships and merch, plus of course, read all my books and then gift more copies to everyone you know, including those you're ambivalent about. Bye.